Hello, it's great to see you today. I have been playing with Christiane's tutorial for the clear um, little bags or totes, depending on what you call them. She made one on a live that I was on and she, I think she has a video with a tutorial, but if not, you can definitely get all the measurements and things from the live. So we'll link that down below for you. As we all know, I love to make anything I can into a shaker. So while I was playing with her tutorial and giving it a go, I have worked out a way to make it into a clear shaker element rather than just a clear element. So I asked her if it was okay and she said it was fine for me to film this. So I'm gonna do a quick tutorial showing you guys how to make the clear bags but with a shaker element instead. I've messed with the measurements a bit because I wanted this to fit into a large letter box for some flat mail that I'm making, but you could definitely use this concept for any size. You can use her measurements, um, maybe I can link down below the ones for the full size one, but this will be perfect for flat mail. I consider flat mail to be anything that will fit up to a large letter box. Here that is 2.5 centimetres, I believe, 2.5 centimetres tall. So this will fit inside there. All you're gonna need is some kind of clear element to make your shaker. You could use acetate, you could use um, vellum if you didn't want it to be completely clear. I have got one of these page protectors. This is just a standard document wallet. You don't need the fancy Project Life ones, but those ones will work as well. For the smaller size that I'm making, this eight by three inch piece works perfectly. I chose eight inches across because these are A4 document wallets and it meant I could slice them this way, sort of portrait if that makes sense, so that I could get more out of each sheet. So those are the measurements I've worked with but obviously you can go for bigger or smaller or whatever, this works either way. I will be using a sewing machine for this but you totally don't have to. You could definitely just do it with tape or glue or any adhesive that you wish. Just turn my hot glue gun on to make the box. So I'll go over these measurements for you. The clear piece is eight by three. Obviously this has two pieces for me to keep all of my sequins inside. So you will need two pieces if you've not got a wallet like this that will cut the two pieces for you. Then you will need two strips which are half an inch wide. They need to be as long as your clear piece I'm going to make them slightly longer so it gives me something to stick them to when I wrap it round. It will make sense when I show you. Um, these are a little bit long, I'm just going to trim them with scissors. The reason you need two of these is because you will want to make it double sided so that you can, it doesn't show the plain white on the inside because obviously it's clear you'll be wrapping it round. I'll explain it when we get there but you will need two of those. Then you will need another piece which is three quarters of an inch wide and the same length again as this, a little bit longer if you want something for it to stick to. And then the bottom box piece. I am using a piece which is one and a half by four and a half inches, purely because I want it to fit in flat mail, but you could make the box any size you want. You would need to adjust these pieces to make them a bit longer so they will wrap round, but you'll get the general idea when I show you in a second. First thing I'm going to do is score the box piece. You won't be able to see this on the outside, but you will be able to see it on the inside. So if that bothers you, maybe choose a patterned piece of paper, but it would only need to be patterned on the inside, the bit that you're folding. I'll show you which I mean in a second, that will be easier. So I'm gonna score this at half an inch on every side. It does make this a very thin bag, but I need it to fit within that flat metal box, so. You could definitely make this thicker though if you wanted to. This is a very basic way to make any kind of box. Um, so you could definitely mess with the measurements pretty easily. Then you want to take your scissors and cut up in each of the corners. So you'll see the square. You just want to cut up to the one, the one side to the where the cross meets in the middle. Turn it and cut up on the side that's facing you again, turn it again, cut the one that's facing you, turn it again and cut the one that's facing you. That way when you put your box together it will be really sturdy. I'm gonna use hot glue to put this together purely for speed, but you can use whatever adhesive, it doesn't really matter. And you won't be able to see the outside of this box, so don't worry too much about that. If the 
tops of these pieces don't line up exactly or anything it's fine you won't see it see like here I've got a little bit that's overhanging won't notice once I put it all together so not going to worry about it so just quickly back to what I was saying about the patterned paper you would want the pattern to be inside here the outside will not be seen I mean the bottom will but it should be standing on it so I won't worry about that too much but again you can use whatever paper you like that is your basic little box this shows how wide and how long your bag will be next up is preparing your clear piece because mine is attached at both sides I want to just cut this side open so that I will have a slot to put my sequins in <laughs> mustn't forget the sequins this piece is going to be the bottom piece so you want to take your clear pieces and just lay them overlapping slightly I'm going to trim this while I'm here so I've just as you can see just got a little extra bit either side I like to adhere this bit with sellotape because you won't be able to see it but you could definitely just use double sided tape and stick this on I'm using sellotape because I will be using a sewing machine and it does not like double sided tape make sure to keep the sellotape or whatever you're using on the white part not on the clear this comes slightly off of the card but I'm planning to trim it in just a second so so it'll be on there like that I'm going to trim off the extra sellotape you might not need to do this step but but I'll show you because it's the way that I'm doing this one then you want to do the same with this piece again I need to trim this one you want to just make sure that the clear piece is overlapping it slightly and then I'm going to use more sellotape to hold this bit on here if you aren't going to stitch the cardstock pieces on then I would suggest also sticking the plastic bits together obviously so you would need double sided tape on the cardstock and then double sided tape inside here to hold all of your sequins in place you could also totally skip this step if you're really good with your sewing machine but I worry about things moving around so that's why I've gone for taping them down first then you can add the inside piece now or you can add it after you've stitched so that it hides the back of the stitching I think that's what I'm going to do so I'm going to go over to my sewing machine you're going to stitch both long edges and one short edge make sure that one of your short edges stays open for sequins so that will be this edge for me so again you're stitching just these three this is your piece with all three sides stitched if you haven't already added your second piece to the inside go ahead and do that now I'm going to use double sided tape for mine this red line tape is from Hobbycraft and I find it just holds a bit stronger than the normal one and just trim that to the same size as your top piece that is your basic clear element now you just want to add your sequins inside you can add as many or as little as you like it's entirely up to you this part you could use confetti if you like you could even leave it clear if that's what you like it's entirely up to you but I love to add sequins to absolutely everything that I can so I think it probably needs just a few more once you've added as many sequins as you like you can go ahead and stitch this edge closed I'm going to run over and do that now and I'll be back with you in a second here is your shaker part completely finished you need to go ahead and trim off oh, sorry it's tape over you need to go ahead and trim off the threads that are poking out unfortunately while I was halfway through sewing my bobbin ran out <laughs> so I've had to use a darker one because that's just what I had on hand and I wanted to get this finished but obviously if you're using matching or a light colour you won't notice quite so much also the way I'm going to be putting this together I'm planning to hide the join so the way Christiane makes them she adds the straps the whole way along the front and the back 
Um, let me grab a piece of paper and show you. So this was the front of the bag. She adds straps so that they tuck in here and then go all the way to the top. You can hide this join behind one of these. The easiest way I've found to do that is to mark this where you think you're going to add those straps. So probably a bit close together. I was going to say there, but okay, ish. I might move them in or out ever so slightly, but remember that the thicker part is the bottom of your bag because the top part will not cover this quite so well. Best way I've found to do this is to use hot glue. So you want to start it where one of these marks are. That way it will meet there again and you can cover it, like I said, with the decorative strips. So I'm gonna pop that there. Once your first bit is stuck down, you're basically just wrapping this bottom piece around the box. Obviously you wanna sort of make sure that the sequins are where you want them to be. You can distribute them after it's all stuck down, so don't worry too much using hot glue to just go round bit by bit. I find this the easiest way. You're just aligning the bottom of this piece with the bottom of the box. Hold each bit for a few seconds and then move on to the next. As you go round, you can sort of bend the top part to match. There you go, so that will be one side of your bag. You can push the sequins round later, so don't worry about those. Ooh. This part will be the front, so you want to make sure that you've got a decent amount of sequins in that bit. And then you're just coming back around to meet this piece. You also want to attach these top pieces. So make sure that they're aligned, add some hot glue, and then stick that bit together as well. We're gonna use the decorative piece to cover the stitching, but you could definitely cut this a little bit shorter if you wanted to, so that this would be this join would be hidden as well. And you could do the same with the other piece. Let me cut that bit a little bit shorter. Also remember that we've made the join at the back of the bag, so it won't notice as much as the front here. That is your basic bag shape. Now you can do whatever you like to the front and the back. Like I said, I know Christiane adds the little pieces. You could slot that in there, go all the way up. And then there's another one on the other side. So it would end up looking like that and you could also match those on the back which like I said earlier will cover that join then she adds on handles which you can do the same way as I have on my 3d memory decks bag I will link that tutorial down below for you but I just wanted to really quickly show you how to create the shaker element instead of just the plain clear one I will make sure to post a picture of this finished little bag over on my Instagram. I might even decorate it and finish it all on a live. If I do, I will let you know about that as well. So thank you so much for joining this little tutorial. Hopefully you'll all be making these shaker bags very soon. Please don't forget to tag me if you do. I'd love to see your creations. Like this video if you enjoyed it. Subscribe to see my future stuff and comment down below. See you next time. Bye.